Ever wondered how the economy affects your everyday life? I have got you covered today. We are covering the 10 essential economic terms you need to know. If you often find yourself clueless when people say fancy terms like GDP, well, you've landed in the right place. I have made this video to cover 10 essential concepts and I will try to as simple as possible in my explanation. My goal here is simple, to equip you with the knowledge you need in a fun way. No jargon-filled lectures or mind-numbing equations, just good old conversational vibes. So get ready to embark on a thrilling expedition where we'll unravel the mysteries behind GDP, inflation, and so much more. By the time we're done, you'll be confidently discussing the economy with your friends, impressing your boss with your economic acumen, and making informed decisions that can positively impact your financial well-being. So, what are you waiting for? Number one, economy. All right, let's start our journey into the world of economics by answering a fundamental question. What exactly is the economy? Well, in simple terms, the economy is like a giant web that connects all of us, influencing how we produce, distribute, and consume goods and services. It's like the bustling heart of a city, pulsating with activity and impacting every aspect of our lives. Think about it this way. When you buy your morning coffee from your favorite local cafe or snag the latest smartphone, you're participating in the economy. When you start your own business, work a job, or invest in the stock market, you're a player in the economic game. The economy is the stage where all these actions unfold. Now, let's break it down a bit further. The economy consists of three main players, producers, distributors, and consumers. Producers are the individuals and businesses that create goods and services. They could be farmers, manufacturers, or service providers. Distributors are the ones responsible for getting those goods and services from the producers to the consumers. And of course, consumers are all of us, the people who purchase and use those goods and services. It's important to understand that the economy is not a fixed entity. It's dynamic and constantly evolving. So now that we've laid the foundation by understanding what the economy is and its role in society, get ready for even more mind-blowing insights. Number two, GDP. Ah, GDP. Three little letters that we hear day in and day out. So what exactly is GDP? Well, GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product, and it's like a pulse check for a country's economic health. It measures the total value of all goods and services produced within a specific time frame, usually a year, within a country's borders. Let me break it down with a relatable example. Imagine a small island nation called Fairyland. In Fairyland, they produce cars, grow crops, and provide various services. Now, to calculate the GDP of this island, we would add up the market value of all the cars, crops, and services produced within the country's boundaries in a year. It gives us a snapshot of the economic activity and output within Fairyland. GDP serves as a crucial yardstick to gauge a country's economic performance. It helps us understand if an economy is growing or shrinking, and it provides insights into the standard of living, employment levels, and overall productivity. Governments, policymakers, and investors closely monitor GDP to make informed decisions and develop strategies for economic development. However, it's essential to recognize that GDP has its limitations. It doesn't capture the entire story of a nation's well-being. For instance, GDP fails to account for factors like income inequality, environmental impact, and the quality of life. It's like measuring the success of a book solely by the number of pages without considering the depth of its content. So, while GDP is a vital tool, it's crucial to complement it with other indicators to gain a more comprehensive understanding of a country's well-being. We'll explore some of these indicators later in our journey. Number three, inflation. We hear on the news all the time, but let's really understand what inflation is. Inflation occurs when there is a sustained increase in the general price level of goods and services over time. Simply put, it means that your money buys you less than it used to. Imagine you could buy a delicious burger for $5 a few years ago, but due to inflation, the price of that same burger has now risen to $8. That's inflation. The prices of goods and services gradually increase, eroding the purchasing power of your hard-earned money. Now, what causes inflation? Well, there are a few factors at play. One of the primary drivers is the excessive growth of the money supply in an economy. When there's more money circulating, people have more purchasing power, which leads to increased demand for goods and services. As demand rises, so do prices. 
inflation can have both positive and negative consequences. On the positive side, moderate inflation can stimulate economic growth and investment. It encourages spending and incentivizes businesses to expand and innovate. However, when inflation becomes too high or unpredictable, it can pose significant challenges. Governments and central banks closely monitor and manage inflation to maintain price stability and foster a healthy economy. They implement various policies, such as adjusting interest rates or tightening monetary measures to keep inflation in check. Number four, supply and demand. Imagine you're at a farmer's market, eyeing a basket of juicy, ripe strawberries. The seller only has a limited quantity available. Now, you're not the only one craving those delicious berries. There are many others interested as well. Here's where supply and demand come into play. Supply refers to the quantity of a good or service that producers are willing to offer for sale. In our strawberry example, it's the number of baskets the farmer is willing to sell. On the other hand, demand represents the quantity of a good or services that consumers are willing and able to buy. In this case, it's the number of people eager to purchase those strawberries. The interaction between supply and demand influences prices in a market economy. When demand exceeds supply, prices tend to rise, as everyone competes for the limited quantity available. Conversely, when supply outstrips demand, prices tend to fall, as producers try to entice buyers with lower prices. The concept of equilibrium is key to understanding market dynamics. Equilibrium occurs when the quantity of a good or service demanded matches the quantity supplied. It's like finding the sweet spot where buyers and sellers agree on a price that balances their interest. At this point, market forces are in balance and there's no pressure for prices to change. For example, let's say the farmer adjusts the price of the strawberry basket too high. Fewer people are willing to pay that price, reducing demand. As a result, the farmer may find that there's excess supply. To reach equilibrium, the farmer might need to lower the price to entice more buyers, ensuring that supply and demand are in harmony. Understanding supply and demand dynamics allows us to comprehend how prices are determined and how markets function. Number five, fiscal policy. Fiscal policy refers to the government's use of taxation and government spending to influence the economy. One of the main tools of fiscal policy is government spending. When the government increases its spending, it injects money into the economy. This can have a positive impact on businesses and individuals as increased government spending often leads to more job opportunities and consumer spending. Another tool is taxation. By altering tax rates, the government can affect the amount of money individuals and businesses have available for spending and investment. Lower taxes can stimulate economic activity as people have more disposable income to spend or invest. On the other hand, higher taxes can help generate revenue for government programs or reduce certain types of consumption. The goal of fiscal policy is to stabilize the economy and promote growth. During times of economic downturn, the government may increase spending or lower taxes to stimulate demand and boost economic activity. Conversely, during periods of inflation or excessive growth, the government may reduce spending or increase taxes to cool down the economy and prevent overheating. Let's take a simple example to illustrate fiscal policy. Imagine an economy in a recession where unemployment is high and businesses are struggling. The government may implement fiscal policy by increasing spending on infrastructure projects, creating jobs, and stimulating economic activity. By doing so, they aim to jumpstart the economy and encourage growth. Number six, monetary policy. Next up, we have monetary policy, which refers to the actions taken by central banks to manage the money supply and interest rates in an economy. Central banks, such as the Federal Reserve in the United States or the European Central Bank, play a vital role in implementing monetary policy. They aim to maintain price stability, promote full employment, and foster economic growth. One key responsibility of central banks is managing the money supply. They can increase or decrease the money supply by buying or selling government securities. When central banks increase the money supply, it stimulates economic activity, as there is more money available for borrowing and spending. Conversely, when they decrease the money supply, it helps prevent excessive inflationary pressures. Another crucial aspect of monetary policy is the management of interest rates. Central banks can influence interest rates by adjusting the rates at which they lend to commercial banks. When central banks lower interest rates, it encourages borrowing and investment, stimulating economic growth. 
Conversely, raising interest rates can help cool down an overheating economy or combat inflation. Let's simplify it with an example. Imagine an economy facing a period of sluggish growth and high unemployment. To stimulate the economy, the central bank may lower interest rates, making it more attractive for businesses and individuals to borrow and spend. This can lead to increased investment, job creation, and economic growth. Number seven, unemployment. Now, no matter what, we can all relate to the word unemployment, but what does it technically mean? Unemployment refers to the state of being without a job, despite actively seeking employment. It can lead to reduced income, financial instability, and even social challenges. Unemployment can take on different forms. One type is frictional unemployment, which occurs when individuals are in between jobs or are seeking new opportunities. Another type is structural unemployment, which arises from a mismatch between the skills workers possess and the skills demanded by the job market. Additionally, there's cyclical unemployment, which stems from downturns in the business cycle. Unemployment is closely linked to various economic indicators. For instance, during periods of economic expansion, when businesses are thriving and there's high demand for goods and services, unemployment tends to be low. Conversely, during economic downturns, businesses may reduce their workforce, leading to higher unemployment rates. Let's paint a simple picture to illustrate this. Imagine an economy experiencing a recession with declining economic activity and businesses struggling to stay afloat. As a result, many companies are forced to lay off employees, leading to a rise in unemployment. This not only affects individuals who lose their jobs, but also has a ripple effect, as reduced consumer spending can further impact businesses. Number eight, international trade. International trade means connecting nations and facilitating the exchange of goods and services across borders. It enables countries to specialize in producing what they do best and acquire goods and services they lack. The benefits of international trade are immense, fostering economic growth, job creation, and access to a broader range of products for consumers. When we talk about international trade, we encounter terms like imports and exports. Imports refer to goods and services brought into a country from abroad, while exports are goods and services sold to other countries. The balance between imports and exports results in either a trade deficit or a trade surplus. A trade deficit occurs when a country's imports exceed its exports. This can happen when a nation relies heavily on imported goods or has a lower level of competitiveness in certain industries. On the other hand, a trade surplus occurs when a country's exports surpass its imports, indicating a competitive advantage in certain sectors. Let's illustrate this with a simple example. Imagine country A is known for its agricultural productivity and exports a surplus of wheat to country B. In return, country B, known for its technological advancements, exports electronic devices to country A. This exchange benefits both nations, as each country gains access to goods they lack and can focus on producing what they excel at. While international trade brings numerous benefits, such as increased consumer choices and economic growth, it also presents potential drawbacks. It can lead to job displacement in certain industries and may result in unequal distribution of wealth and income. It's crucial for countries to strike a balance and ensure fair and sustainable trade practices. Number nine, economic indicators. Economic indicators are signposts that guide us in understanding the overall health and performance of an economy. GDP growth rate, for instance, measures the rate at which the economy is expanding or contracting, gives us a snapshot of the pace of economic activity and can signal periods of growth or recession. Another crucial indicator is the inflation rate. It measures the rate at which prices of goods and services are increasing. Understanding inflation helps individuals and businesses anticipate changes in purchasing power and make adjustments accordingly. Lastly, the unemployment rate measures the proportion of the labor force that is unemployed. It sheds light on the job market's health and provides insights into the level of employment opportunities available. Number 10, economic cycles. Economic cycles represent the natural rise and fall of economic activity over time. An expansion phase occurs when economy is growing, businesses are flourishing, and employment is on the rise. This leads to a peak, the highest point of economic growth. However, as the economy reaches its limits, it transitions into a contraction phase, characterized by declining growth, reduced business activity, and higher unemployment. Finally, a trough is reached, 
representing the lowest point of the cycle before the next expansion begins. Several factors drive economic cycles. Business investment, for instance, plays a significant role. When businesses invest in new projects, it stimulates economic growth and leads to expansion. Consumer spending is another key factor. When consumers have confidence and spend on goods and services, it boosts demand and drives economic activity. Let me simplify it with an example. During an expansion phase, businesses invest in new factories, create jobs, and produce more goods. As a result, consumer spending increases, driving further growth. Eventually, the peak is reached and the economy starts to slow down. Businesses may reduce investments and consumers may tighten their belts, leading to a contraction phase. Understanding economic cycles is vital for long-term planning. By recognizing the stage of the cycle, individuals and businesses can make informed decisions. For example, during an expansion phase, businesses might invest in expanding their operations. During a contraction, they may focus on cutting costs and weathering the downturn. Individuals can adjust their saving and spending habits accordingly. And there you have it. We've journeyed through the intricacies of the economy, unlocking 10 essential concepts along the way. Remember, understanding the economy isn't just reserved for experts or economists. It's for all of us. By grasping these key concepts, you can make more informed decisions, engage in meaningful discussions, and shape your financial future. Thank you for tuning in. Until we meet again, stay curious, stay informed, take care.